Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 18 of AVD Monthly. I'm your host, Andy Whiteside. Lucky to have uh, Greg Roberts with me. Uh, Roberson, sorry, Greg. I told myself not to say that. I turned around and said it. And um, Greg is with Nerdio, and uh, Moen Khan is the global CTO of Zintegra. Uh, Moen is with us as well. Greg, your title again? Enterprise Sales Engineer. Enterprise Sales Engineer. My favorite job of all time was a sales engineer job. It's fun, for sure. It, is. it really is. You get to go play with all the new toys and tell people about it. <laughs> exactly. You know? um, what have you been up to? Not a whole lot. Uh, we've got, got quite a few new features in the product. Uh, one of them has, uh, is still in private preview, but it's been a, a, a big ask yeah. uh, called uh, cost attribution that we've come out with, Okay. Uh, as well as some other enhancements uh, in the last uh, deployment of 4.2 that came out. Yeah. Well, uh, let's stick with the, you know, the the moral or the the the, I don't know, the framework of the podcast. We'll knock out the AVD stuff from Microsoft, and then we'll jump into the Nerdio updates. Uh, I think what we're going to find is a little bit of Microsoft stuff got done, which you know is is a lot. Um, I'm not trying to trivialize it, and then a whole bunch of Nerdio stuff happened as well. Mo and uh, what's going on in your world? Uh, Really excited with uh, where Nerdio is or AVD is going with uh, Nerdio. Mm -hmm. I feel a lot of enhancement. Uh, July was a big month. Uh, I feel a uh, uh, lot of pain points and uh, things that customer were talking about has been addressed. And I can't wait to talk more about uh, and learn from uh, our insider on uh, what other things being added uh, and how it's going to provide value to our customers. Hey, Moen, I know you've done a, a couple of big rollouts of uh, AVD plus Nerdio. What's the one feature that has been the biggest uh, needle mover or are there are there just a bunch of features compounded that make it a good play? Well, auto, auto scaling is the biggest one uh, so far uh, that we see, uh, uh, especially with uh, doing rollout um, uh, with customer where we did initial rollout of uh, around 3,500 um, uh, AVD desktop using PowerShell script. Um, this was um, eight, nine month long project uh, where we were able to script the whole thing uh, end to end, but it was a painful process. Mm -hmm. Now, still, even after doing the image management, which is something that we were able to do it through scripting uh, and PowerShell, uh, that's something uh, that we always struggled on auto scaling part. That's something that uh, uh, that I feel is is the biggest one. Uh, that's where I push most of our customer. That uh, Microsoft will never like to have uh, uh, scalability uh, or auto scaling a feature because uh, they are getting consumption. But um, from uh, end customer perspective, it makes a lot of sense to have this uh, functionality in there. So, I mean, what you're really pointing out is it's a it's a conundrum for Microsoft. Right? They want more Azure consumption. How much sense does it make? To make it easy not to consume. You're right. Yeah. Greg, would you, would you say that's um, one of the biggest value adds you see over and over again? I would. Uh, you know, uh, AVD is an entry point for a lot of other customers. And, uh, you know, if the customers are looking to save money and auto scale is the way to do it, they'll eventually uh, uh, sign up for more services within Azure as they get additionally comfortable mm -hmm. uh, with uh, AVD. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's go through the July 2022 updates, and we'll jump into you know some of the more important Nerdio updates. So the first one here is uh, scheduled agent updates now generally available. That is the uh, the agent within the virtual desktop that we're talking about. That is that that is. Um, so uh, prior to this update in Microsoft, the agents kind of had their own mind and updated whenever they decided to, they wanted to update. With this new scheduled update, which we do have integrated into Nerdio as well, uh, you can define in Azure a primary and a secondary schedule uh, for updating those agents. And that window is a two-hour window for each one of those maintenance windows. So there's a primary uh, and then a secondary in the event that those virtual machines are not turned on to get it the next time. With mm -hmm. Nerdio... With Nerdio and our auto scale capabilities and automation, we're able to just set that with one schedule, turn them all on, 
get them all updated and then shut them back down in a uh, 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 orderly fashion as quickly as possible to uh, uh, ensure that does it cost uh, any more than it should. Mm -hmm. Moen, any uh, comments on what Microsoft's done here um, and then any real world experience, either Microsoft or Nerdia? Uh, I think I agree. This is something that I always feel to understand um, how Nerdio can be the best friend and uh, worst enemy for uh, Microsoft because uh, all these features are really exciting. And uh, from customer side, I see how it has benefit. I'm not sure how Microsoft likes it. Uh, uh, these are uh, uh, game changer uh, features uh, for customers where uh, they have been waiting for these options. Um, if you remember, we had these um, this option available in Citrix at one point and um, Citrix decided they want to pull it out um, only for one release and they had to put it right back on and they had to roll out release just, just for this uh, schedule update. So mm -hmm. this is a very important feature, uh, feature that, uh, uh, that every uh, customer who's running virtualization environment they need. And um, I'm really glad to see that uh, making it uh, into G uh, going for a GA now. Yeah. Well, the next thing on here is uh, FS Logics 2201 Hotfix 2. Um, well, I know you have a lot of experience with FS Logics. You want to just give our listeners just a quick insight into what it is, and then let's talk about what they fixed here. Uh, one point, uh, AppSense uh, uh, and um, uh, Ivanti, uh, these were uh, the big profile management uh, solution where customers were paying uh, big money to go and uh, deploy this thing. Uh, everyone knows uh, the pain for uh, local profile, mandatory roaming, and all those issues were addressed by Ivanti and AppSense coming in. Uh, FX Logic uh, came in uh, to the same level of uh, uh, flexibility and control uh, and corruption control that um, uh, th that comes with uh, uh, profile and the uh, nature of uh, virtualization or a VDI scenario that we are in. Uh, Microsoft acquired it. They made it part of their Office 365 or M65 package. And uh, that that's, this is one thing that has um, uh, saved tons of um, challenges uh, in terms of uh, corruption and uh, profile bloating and those things. And I believe with, um, uh, with integration of FS Logic in uh, Nerdio and AVD and uh, giving you more control on um, uh, on uh, caching and um, and then tracking of uh, files and registry cleanup and all those things. Uh, uh, this is this is a good feature. And uh, with this hotfix, I think they're uh, trying to clean up and make it more um, uh, more usable for um, for their AVD customers. Yeah, Greg, you've probably been around all this long enough to see before and after before FS Logics and after, right? Uh, a little bit, yes. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, um, your take on how this uh, applies in an AVD world, you know, without it, are you, um, I mean, are you just pretty much like my, my personal take, right? With Outlook, especially Outlook Cache, you just really can't do virtual non-persistent desktops without FS Logics. Is that true? That is true. And uh, since within AVD, you bounce around from uh, device to the device, you have to have something that manages that profile to move with you. So it's a most definitely a, a requirement uh, for AVD. Yeah. Uh, okay, next uh, is uh, Japan and Australia. Metadata service now generally available. Probably not a lot we can say to make that sound like fun, but uh, I guess, um, Greg, you want to just update us or uh, just overview of what the metadata portion of AVD is and, and maybe talk about if there's anything Nerdio does uh, to enhance that even more. And, you know, the highlight here is, um, you know, that metadata being available on different continents now. The metadata has historically been kind of uh, a little bit of a sore spot within the AVD uh, customer base that Microsoft has, because originally it was um, only kept within the U.S., uh, they finally were able to extend that out to uh, Europe for those countries with the GDPR uh, requirements, which was a big which was a big move. Uh, I uh, have to believe that 
Microsoft has seen the same thing that we have seen, which is a much larger growth in the Japan and Australia area. And so uh, we welcome that 100%. It's great. I've got a lot of customers in Australia, but the value in the metadata is information effectively about where your workspaces are, your host pools and your host reside. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just kind of, you know, the traffic cop uh, for when you come into AVD, uh, you have to have a location or you have to store that information somewhere. Now right. we're able to, we're able to store that closer uh, to the customer, uh, hopefully uh, speeding up, you know, users access overall. Do you think that data is limited into these areas or is it just uh, also available and replicated across the entire plane? Oh, it's, it's definitely limited to the location that you define for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the and idea there is you, if you care about your data, then it's it's where you want it to be, not where you want it to be and everywhere else too? Right. So as an example for Australia, a lot of customers up until about a month ago had to put all their uh, metadata somewhere in the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, typically the West Coast. Uh, so there's a couple of things that help Microsoft from that perspective is, is it reduces some of the load in those uh, uh, regions on the, either coast back down to where they really need to be. So it does relieve some pressure on those regions uh, for those customers as well. Yeah, yeah. Mo, any comments on metadata? Uh, not really. I think uh, this is more, uh, just shows how, um, um, from from the product perspective, how they are um, uh, growing and um, uh, now trying to keep everything in uh, one location versus, um, uh, the expansion and uh, growth that they're seeing in Australia and uh, Japan and uh, other places. Um, this is this is more. Uh, I think uh, this is more on um, uh, data sovereignty and and those versus um, and showing the, uh, the the pace that uh, Nario is growing. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, it's becoming it's, international, right? I mean, AVD yeah. is becoming international, and it is products like Nerdio can ride that uh, ride that backbone. Yeah, without having to re having to invent it all. Okay, um, so you guys will probably uh, either one of you uh, have to give us a little background on storage blob image type and how that's, I believe, was early on the way to do it, and then now it's not. Greg, is that something that you've got insight into? I do not, unfortunately. Moen, do you understand the uh, storage blob, blob image type and the history behind that? Uh, uh, yes, I do. Um, and, and this is something that uh, uh, the previous deployment that I was talking about uh, that we did last year um, uh, on um, large scale rollout. Uh, when we were doing, uh, we were using a blob, um, storage blob uh, for storing all these things into image. And now this thing is moving into uh, more uh, uh, storage type of company where this gives us more faster storage to load it. I'm not sure uh, if there was any value for uh, Microsoft to store everything into a uh, blob. Uh, this just gives us uh, opportunity to bring in more um, uh, more advanced uh, storage type of architecture to store this thing and Microsoft is just um, uh, uh, slowly uh, moving away from all these uh, unmanaged desks that um, uh, that they were trying to store in the in in their own blob. Mm -hmm. Okay, so more efficient, uh, more higher performance, um, maybe more cost effective if you are able to do it more effectively. Right, if, uh, and only because they are opening up for um, other storage vendor instead of uh, keeping it closed uh, only for uh, uh, Azure to store it on their blob tribe. They are just uh, opening it and saying that we are moving away. Uh, you can bring it and store it wherever you want. Okay. Okay, and then the uh, final one here on the Microsoft side, uh, Azure Virtual Desktop Custom Configuration Changing to PowerShell. Greg, is that, uh, is that in your wheelhouse? That is not. Um, we've got our own uh, great automation on our side, just just saying. Okay. So, Greg, as we go through these, including the blob one, which I don't know applies here, but uh, if there's anything that Nerdio does specific to that. Um, so, I guess what you're saying in traditional Nerdio fashion here is um, you don't have to rely on uh, virtual 
desktop custom configuration, uh, old school or PowerShell in this case, uh, which is super capable, super, um, you know, a competent solution. However, if you have Nerdio in place, you don't have to be intimidated by PowerShell because Nerdio is going to enable you to do it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, a a absolutely. I do remember the days of uh, uh, AVD, uh, WVD Classic at the time when it was all PowerShell. That was very uh, arduous to get done. So um, one of the reasons why I love Nerdio is we do it all uh, automatically for you. No PowerShell required. And when you say automatically, it is automatic, but it's through a UI of some type? Well, not so much the custom. I mean, Nerdio already does all the custom configuration, right? We've already had all of that built into the UI for uh, since day one. Mm -hmm. This is just this is just a little bit of Microsoft trying to catch up uh, with some additional customizations uh, that they're seeing in the marketplace and customers asking for. Right. Moen, um, any thoughts, comments on this one? Uh, not really. I think uh, this is uh, this is a minor update for Microsoft. So, and you know, when in doubt, um, you know, Microsoft's got PowerShell commandlets, 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 uh, commandlets underneath all this. And uh, you know, when they expose those, that's when you expose those. That's when you can you know get really magical about what you're doing in any of the Microsoft product sets. Uh, you know, going back to Nerdio, that's an uh, opportunity for them to shine and make it more uh, administrator friendly. Um, for those who just want to be able to do it through a through a system. Well, guys, that's all the uh, updates that uh, Microsoft had for July 2022. I'm going to pop over here and bring up the uh, the Nerdio latest release information. And Greg, you want to tell us uh, the, the the most important features? I see this is from 7-15-2022, so July, of course. Um, what are the top, uh, let's say, five, six, seven that you would highlight? So the first one that's really a big one, and we've gotten a lot of requests from uh, on customers, uh, are how can I determine not only how much I'm spending in Azure Virtual Desktop, but how can I allocate that for uh, uh, chargebacks to different departments and organizations? Our first one on the list there is cost. Uh, it's actually called cost attribution reporting provide you uh, per user cost reporting, as well as information on, so we, uh, Nerdio is gonna collect the cost related to your VMs, your disks, your uh, storage accounts with FS Logics, images, uh, uh, as well as your network uh, cost related to AVD, your log analytics cost, as well as the cost for Nerdio running in your, as a, on PaaS services in your environment. Wow. And with our option, uh, we're able to effectively give you the ability to create three basic different reports, one being uniform. So how would you like to spread that cost across your users? Uniformly uh, is one option. Uh, proportional, uh, if you have uh, a handful of users that use uh, uh, Azure Virtual Desktop more often than some of your other users, they'll get a higher uh, uh, ratio of that cost because they use it more or you can just simply leave it fully unallocated uh, but uh, we also will provide you the total number of sessions uh, as well as session hours average sessions per user average session durations and one specifically thing uh, specific thing is our total vm running hours this is going to be the percentage of session hours uh, uh, or I should say percentage of session hours is the ratio of the VM running hours in related to total session hours. So in a quote, perfect, efficient personal desktop environment, you want to, you want to see that value to be somewhere around a hundred percent, which indicates your VMs are very, or your environment is set up uh, very, very well and very efficient from a multi-user environment. You typically want to see that number below 100% because you have more users per virtual machine. Anything over 100% is going to indicate that you're uh, uh, not efficiently configured from a multi-user session environment. But you're able to export those logs uh, and run those on a monthly basis to get an idea of your entire total cost related to uh, AVD. 
And that's been a huge request for many customers, even back in the day from when I was at Microsoft. And so, Greg, this isn't some pre-calculator, configurator thing that's telling you what might be. This is what's actually happening? This is your actual data. So we're uh, effectively what we do is we've got quite a few uh, uh, Azure tags that we assign to the resources that we're managing. And that data gets reported back to Log Analytics, for which we're uh, pulling that data from Log Analytics to calculate uh, uh, those costs. Um, yeah, I want to ask: uh, you know, is that uh, is that like an arduous task for the team to go in and configure some of these, you know, costs per runtime calculate or not the calculations, but the setup? But before I do that, Moen, thoughts on the concept just in general? I think we're, you're on mute, but sorry. Uh, I believe Greg has um, covered uh, nothing. Nothing more to add to it. Okay, Greg. Um, as far as setting up, like how much a unit of X is worth in terms of dollars or cents, is there? A tool you guys come up with that kind of makes those general assumptions or does the team that uh, owns the system need to go in and put a ratio in? Oh, no. So it'll, so in a couple, interesting that you bring that up. So Nerdio also has the ability. So if you're, if your customer has a, uh, uh, a discount agreement with Microsoft, right? Mm -hmm. We can include that discount percentage within our environment that will also be calculated into your total cost, right? So we can take your EA discounts and do that. Uh, setting it up is actually pretty straightforward. It is currently in private preview. I've got a number of customers currently running it. We're looking to have that hopefully in a public preview here probably in the next three to four weeks, I would suspect. Uh, and it'll be a, a big game changer for those customers looking for that kind of information. Well, I guess as my well question... Was kind of dumb, right? I mean, you you are, you're paying whatever Microsoft says you're paying, and then there may be a discount associated with what you're paying. Right, but getting all that information is incredibly difficult mm -hmm. uh, from uh, an average uh, Azure user perspective, right? So you have to have some mechanism to be able to co collect it, write the uh, Custo queries and all the scripts to get all that information. We've uh, added that within our, our solution. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see. The alternative Next. in the past was somebody in a spreadsheet trying to calculate <laughs> it. Uh, it's uh, up until uh, this with Nerdio, it's yeah. always a guesstimate and it's never correct. Yeah. And I guess in uh, theory, this isn't probably something Microsoft is working on adamantly because uh, why would they? Well, they have partners to do that. Uh, yeah. and, and so uh, they rely on us. Uh, as a partner to bring that kind of information forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our next yeah. option, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, what's the next, uh, what's the next highlight on here? You got, how many is it total? Like 20 so or 23 or I think 23 total, but we'll just go over some of these, the big ones with the, the major screenshots. So, Personal host pool auto grow. This is really, really great. Prior to auto grow and personal host pools, you had to manually go deploy a VM or uh, deploy a virtual machine, uh, uh, a number of them ahead of time, maybe over provision what you need and pay extra money. So with our personal pool auto grow, you define how many extra virtual machines you want to have in standby. And as a user gets assigned to a virtual machine, a new user gets assigned to that virtual machine, it will reduce that in this example from three to two. We'll mm -hmm. recognize that we'll automatically build out uh, another one to keep it at three so that you're not over provisioning and you're not necessarily under provisioning, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it automates the process uh, for you quite a bit uh, and make it, it makes life uh, a lot more uh, manageable with, a, with AVD. And so this isn't a case where it's a bunch of pooled, you know, a pool of machines. These are individually assigned. And as people come in and consume one, then it's theirs. And then you want to keep the uh, you know keep the ball rolling so that you don't run out. Correct, correct. Cool. Uh, our our next option is reimaging uh, host opportunity opportunistic 
uh, I can't even say that word, opportunistically, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, without forcing users uh, to log off. So we've had quite a few uh, customer requests indicating they would like to update their host pool, but they would like to wait until their users are logged off. So we can set this to never force a user off and wait up to you know quite a while, uh, uh, three or four weeks, uh, for those users to log off before uh, we shut down the virtual machine and re-image it. It's just a, another additional option in our re-imaging automation process. The next option we have, number five, you scroll down just a little bit, is going to be our dynamic resource recommendations and filtering. This is really more, this is the beginning of more things to come down the line. But this initial initial uh, configuration of recommendations, or, or really at this point is just filtering, is the ability for a Nerdio manager, uh, AVD manager, to come in and restrict um, what virtual machines, uh, what family, uh, uh, and what VMs to exclude, what kind of cores, memory, all these different uh, uh, available options, uh, and whittle that down so that somebody can't just go in and deploy just anything. You can predefine a set of virtual machines that are approved to deploy in uh, Azure Virtual Desktop, and that's the only thing that shows for that user to select. Hmm. Our next option moving down, uh, pretty small, but it's we've had a lot of requests. It makes life a lot simpler. Uh, we've had customers try to deploy, uh, and then during deployment, we find out that, hey, customer ran out of uh, IP addresses. We're now reporting available IP addresses on the selected network. Yeah, that's good. I, I don't know how many times I've done that in my lab where I you know, <laughs> get get uh, get excited about showing people how to spin up 100 machines at a time only to realize that they only have 15 left, IP addresses left. Exactly. Our next option is pre-stage OS disks for personal desktops. Uh, this is a really nice enhancement for those personal desktop pools that are utilizing start virtual machine on connect. Uh, so... When Nerdio shuts down a virtual machine, we have the ability to change the OS disk. However, when Azure Start VM on Connect starts that VM up, it knows nothing about Nerdio, what Nerdio's done, or the fact that it needs to be a different type of OS disk. So with this new option, provides much more granularity and functionality to that process so that we will continue to keep the OS disk as the running type disk during business hours so that uh, if a user logs in in the morning uh, and then logs out, it would change the disk. But if they went and logged back in uh, and Azure started it up, they would get a slower disk if they had that configured. We ensure that that disk is of the appropriate performance level Mm -hmm. during business hours, eliminating those issues. Wow. So, uh... Greg, are we duplicating on our storage with this uh, feature that uh, we are keeping copies of uh, two disks? Absolutely not. There's not a copy. It's the same disk. It's the same data. It's instantly converted from premium to standard or standard to premium or uh, uh, whatever selection you make. Um, okay, got it. Yeah, it's a quality of service set- setting on the back end of Azure uh, to make it, uh, for lack of a better uh, phrase, uh, it's a QoS setting. Next is our custom view uh, groups. This is really minor. We just made some changes uh, to our current custom views. Uh, It's still the same functionality. We're just calling out uh, the ability to add them into groups themselves rather than individually on the uh, menu bar. Uh, We'll skip the custom roles or minor improvements to that. We'll skip over that. Uh, Another big one, a real, this is a really big one right here. Uh, advanced VM naming patterns. Mm. So the pattern comes with two function with, with two types of patterns, either numbers or out, uh, random alpha ner- numeric characters. Now, prior to doing a pattern, uh, we did a prefix, and the prefix uh, required you to have a minimum of or a maximum of ten characters because we added a dash and four alphanumeric characters. 
Now you can fully customize the full name up to 15 characters with these patterns in it. You could, and, and the idea with this is you have to, you, don't, you no longer have to have the dash as a requirement. You have to have the curly brackets and you would either have one of two symbols, a pound sign or a question mark. And a question mark is going to be a random character. Uh, so you can do up to four pound signs and four uh, question marks in any combination you want, anywhere in the name, including multiple times. So if you wanted all of your hosts to start off with uh, 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 zero through 99, you can put curly bracket, pound, pound, curly bracket, uh, some text. Maybe you wanted a special character in there, a random character. You can put a curly brackets with a question mark, a few more, and then end it off with, uh, you know, maybe uh, a couple more random numbers. It allows you to, to have a lot more flexibility in your virtual machine learning. Yeah, for sure. Did you guys get that uh, concern a lot? We did um, uh, quite often. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's addressed uh, uh, those customers that, that are looking for that. It's been very well received with the customers I've deployed it with. Uh, uh, Trusted Launch uh, uh, is now supported for custom images. Uh, this, uh, we also now display the AVD agent and the FS Logics version down below uh, on number 12. Uh, uh, so if you go to uh, our uh, integration or, or updates page within Nerdio, we'll tell you the version of FS Logics that we're deploying and uh, the version of the AVD agent, as well as uh, we may not get to it at the very bottom, but we are deploying the hotfix, the new version of FS Logics. Uh, as we speak as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we some additional uh, RBAC role configurations, um, some you know additional automation around bulk actions and dynamic group sizing. Hey, Greg, what uh, is RBAC? What is RBAC? I, I'm sure I'll know once you say it, but oh. uh, role based uh, access control. Uh, Sorry. So that that's going to be. Uh, uh, RBAC rules for users to log into Nerdio and manage it. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's some additional customizations uh, that uh, provide more granularity in the RBAC roles of administrators or reviewers or maybe even help desk uh, uh, to manage in a more granular fashion than they were able to previously. Yeah. You know, I think it's funny. Um, I'm not so sure exactly how Moen said it a little while ago, but he kind of talked about I don't want to say if you guys were competitive for AD, ABD, but it's not, right? It's, you're just embracing and enabling what they do. This, those guys should absolutely love all the work you guys are doing monthly to bring the product forward. They do. We bring a lot of customers. We enable a lot of customers from Microsoft. Uh, it's a great thing for them. I mean, if you guys are having to do this much stuff every month, I mean, it's, I mean, you're, you're taking the product from, you know, just a, a good platform to, you know, a really viable solution for them. Well, absolutely. And we've got some really big things coming down the pike in the next six months. I'm, uh, I'll be excited to, to review with you guys when those come out. Uh, but we're really, really increasing the capability of Nerdio. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, that's pretty much uh, the major uh, items uh, that we have that customers have been asking for uh, across the board. Uh, so it, it it brings more uh, usable functionality, uh, more usable customizations to fit in more into an existing environment today, right? So as an example, the naming conventions aren't typically always uh, a big concern for a customer that's starting out, okay? But it's a bigger, much, much bigger concern for those customers that have already deployed AVD, and then we come in uh, to help manage it. They still want to stick to some of their naming uh, uh, uh configurations and this provides that ability yeah. to do that well and i'll highlight uh the first 23 things are are new things and then 24 lists nine things that have been you know fixed patched maintained what have you um i mean in some product cat in some, in some products there's a whole release just for fixes and then a whole release for features you guys <laughs> keep bringing more features and you know fixing the things that need to get fixed every month we do we keep our development team pretty busy yeah. Um, and so, uh, and, and, and 
they've like I said, they've got some big things in store for us uh, and our customers coming down in the next six months. So, Moen, we covered a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, anything specific jump out to you that you want to ask Greg about? Uh, I think the, uh, the one thing that uh, caught my eyes was, um, uh, again, uh, to the point of um, uh, giving Microsoft uh, utilization versus uh, optimizing it for customer uh, starting and start, uh, stopping off uh, disallocated uh, image VM. So I feel that is also a big thing, uh, especially uh, uh, not knowing our users, how they behave and how they control these uh, desktops. So uh, giving them this option of uh, uh, if they have uh, shut down or if they have disconnected and your VMs are still running, uh, I feel uh, that's a big feature in itself on uh, uh, deallocation of uh, those VMs that um, Nerdio is detecting on behalf of uh, our customers. So yeah. yeah. Well, guys, this is great. I appreciate you jumping on. We'll, we'll do it again next month. Uh, Greg, do we expect a whole other list of things from Nerdio next month, or should we? Is it going to be like a quarter? How do you, how you guys have your release cycles? Uh, usually on the fifteenth of every month. Fifteenth every month. Okay. <laughs> well, you well, you better get back at it. We'll let you go. Yeah. Any All one right. thing that uh, I would want uh, uh, Greg to touch upon? Uh, I feel that is a big thing. Um, Remote three and Nerdio integration. Oh yeah. So maybe a quick thirty second. Yeah, so what we've done with Remo3 is we've partnered with Remo3, and a little bit about Remo3 is they have an application that can take, uh, say, your SCCM applications, convert them into uh, and uh, and upload them for uh, Intune uh, is one piece of it. But the big one really for, for the Nerdio integration is the creation of MSIX app attach containers. So you can take an application, run it through Remo. Remo will tell you, uh, will, will it work? Is it, can you virtualize it? Can you containerize it? Uh, will it work? Uh, if there are some issues and there's workarounds, provide you with those workarounds to get it to work. Once you have, have it at that point, it will automatically take that, put it into an MSIX uh, 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 format, hand it off to Nerdio, Automatically, and Nerdio will take that, expand that into a virtual disk, and put it into the storage along with the certificate, eliminating huge amounts of manual labor for those users that are looking to do any of those things. It, yeah, that's that's a big topic, and I think um, Andy, we should uh, run a segment just on um, uh, Remote Three and uh, Nerdio integration. Uh, I have customers either relocating their data center or moving from one version to other version. And this always comes up. Um, how do we qualify if our application is certified to run on Windows 11? I think yeah. this solves a big problem. And it's not a one-time thing, right? Because you're also yeah. going to have updates to those and you're going to want to uh, verify those updates and then you're going to want to uh, package those updates and then you're going to deploy those. Remo and Nerdio fully integrated will do that for you. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, Mo, and we probably need to have an updated uh, webinar on Remo3 and how it works uh, and have the relationship with Nerdio. In addition to that, you may or may not know this, but I'm working on getting uh, Tim Mangum, Mangan uh, and Team Urgent to do a traveling workshop series uh, with with Remo3, and we'll run around the country teaching MIS, MSIX and uh, the latest ways to get things done, including Remo3. So more to come. Nice. All right. Uh, Greg, thank you for joining. Moen, thank you as always. And with that, we'll wrap this one up and do it again next month. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Greg.